As we lower the curtain on 2021, let's take a little bit of time to review. Hello, I'm Maria Hall Brown. I'm delighted to be joined by Council Member Mitch O'Farrell from District 13, and we're going to take a look at his district and 2021. All right, I had to go with the theater analogy mm -hmm. because that's sort of your ballywick. That's really where a lot of, uh, you know, people think of when they think of LA, Hollywood, et cetera. Um, and you were very generous to the theater community in 2021. There was a big need. There was, and thanks Maria for having me. Uh, and yes, there's a, an enormous need because when the pandemic hit, live theater came to a complete halt, as did most of the revenue streams associated with live theater. They couldn't even host events or even rent their venues out for private uh, events. Mm -hmm. So the revenue stream just dried up. We had a lot of theater operators and owners and managers come our way and just see if there was anything we could possibly do. So I created a fund and we supplied 19 different small theaters with $5,000 grants. And th these monies could be used for whatever purpose they needed to just keep them going. Some were used for payroll, some were used for expenses, rent, you name it. And for some theaters, it was just what they needed to stay afloat uh, while they reevaluated other resources that they could cobble together. And so, yeah, the small theater community is so important in Los Angeles and the 13th District. And uh, I'm a product of it way back in the day. I know what the arts can do for a, a, a city like Los Angeles, and we need to support our arts. And this is one small way of doing it. When you talk about the need, the need wasn't restricted to just theaters, obviously, or, or businesses of any kind. I mean, there was also a very early awareness that people weren't working or if they could be working, that maybe they weren't making enough and a very, very, very strong push for renters assistance. Absolutely. So what we did in March of 2020, when the pandemic just landed, we knew that the city would be in trouble. We knew small businesses would be in trouble and we knew renters would be in trouble. So we pivoted and we, we aimed to keep people fed and housed, just went right to the basics. So we created a, a grant for small theaters, as you just heard. We also created a $1 million grant for small businesses and a $1 million subsidy program for renters in the 13th district. Basically all of our uh, discretionary funding for the year, we just stopped everything we were doing and, and just to this effort. And at the same time, one of my colleagues did the same thing in terms of helping renters, Nuri Martinez. So the small business subsidies were $5,000 grants, again, uh, to nearly 200 small businesses in the 13th district for the same purpose, just help them get through the rough spots in the early part of the pandemic, especially. And then the rent subsidy really helped. And then the council president and myself, we combined what we individually did in our districts, and we're the only two council members who did this allocated $1 million. We took the CARES Act funding that we received from the feds and created a $100 million grant to help renters across the city, which was approved unanimously by the city council. And then some months later, we created another 200 million for rent subsidies across the city of LA. I do know that even in 2021, there was a real progressive move to support you know, the LBGTQ community. And there have been some really remarkable strides in that realm. Yeah, you know, as a member of the community myself, since day one of being in office, I've really focused on the transgender non-binary community because even though things are improving significantly, uh, there are still a lot of people that just get left behind and are still in, in a sort of a marginalized, marginalized state by mainstream society. Uh, so we, we never let up on the focus on uplifting this community as well, whether it's through the, the shelter that we created for transgender women in Hollywood or the Midnight Stroll and making sure that program is continually funded and just celebrating and uplifting the visibility of people in the community. And, and we'll continue that pandemic or no pandemic. Um, so yeah, that's, that's an important uh, initiative of mine for sure. And Indigenous Peoples. Indigenous Peoples Day, we celebrated our fourth Indigenous Peoples Day in Los Angeles, and I introduced the Los Angeles Land Initiative at the same time. We're actually looking at deeding property, publicly owned property, back to Indigenous tribes in California. So we're going down the road of what that will look like. Uh, we're also revisiting the actual city seal itself, because within the city seal of Los Angeles is representation of the mission system. Of course, that's controversial, 
as it relates to the local indigenous communities of, of the Tongva and Chumash and Tataviam tribes uh, and other tribes in California. So we're revisiting that and also taking a look at uh, the Columbus um, uh, Transcontinental Highway, which is the 10 freeway, is named after Columbus. So we are entering into a conversation about renaming it and finding a local indigenous name to replace the Columbus uh, Interstate Highway with. So we're doing a lot of things in that, in that regard. So the work continues and it really is something that everyone can get behind. This isn't at the expense of any, anyone. It's in celebration of the first peoples who are here before any of us uh, and made everything possible for the rest of us. So uh, I've always believed that we can create a, a holiday that, that everyone can celebrate and be proud of. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention the problem that has existed, not just in Los Angeles, but you know, in so many areas across the world. Um, and there's also, you know, things that you've done to help with the issue of homelessness here in your district. It is the issue of the day. There's no question about it. But here's what Angelinos want. Angelinos want a compassionate, comprehensive approach to dealing with this crisis. And that means uh, following through on the street engagement protocols that I helped draft, which really uh, require several steps in order to get people under a roof and on a path to wellness. Now, a lot of this was crafted by virtue of what we've been doing in my district for years. Um, outside of downtown Los Angeles, the 13th district, we have, uh, we're doing more than just about any other council district. I don't mean that as a disservice to my colleagues because everyone's working very hard on this mm -hmm. issue, but we have the first safe sleep site. We have our second tiny home village opening up as we speak on third street. Uh, we have safe parking sites, we have bridge home sites, and we have permit supportive housing through HHH and other sources. Uh, and we've stood up hundreds and hundreds of temporary shelter units just this, this calendar year, well over 500. Um, and in addition to several permanent supportive housing solutions, um, the Echo Park Lake operation was the single largest housing solution operation in the city's history up until the time that that occurred. And so we were able to get everyone there indoors into an environment and on a path to wellness over a three month period before we closed the park, made the repairs necessary and reopened the park in time for summer. And that is again, a crown jewel of the LA park system. And we've since stood up hundreds more temporary shelters through our project room key and also through our tiny home village that we opened in Alvarado after the Echo Park Lake uh, uh, action. So we're on our way and more and more on the uh, coming uh, on the way uh, and we can't stop. So I think that's what people expect. This way we can keep our, our public spaces safe, clean and secure for everyone, housed, unhoused, but our public rights of way, our public parks are for everyone and Angelinos need to feel safe People experiencing homelessness need to be housed and under a roof. And so uh, that's where I stand and we're making great strides. And I think that what we do in the 13th can be an example for the rest of the city. Do you go down and see it, the people enjoying Echo Park? All the time. Yeah, I drive I, by there and I see moms pushing strollers and just, you know. It's just wonderful. And the families came back and children playing and women feel safe jogging alone again. And, our parks were meant to be enjoyed by everyone yeah. and they need to be a safe haven. A lot of uh, families in Echo Park living right around the park had been displaced from using the park. And these are families and small children in the play areas. So they're safe and secure and I want everyone to keep enjoying all of our parks across the city for the purpose they were intended. Okay, well we've talked. Now let's take a look at District 13 year in review. All right. Someday, well into the future, we'll be able to look back and have a little bit of pride for pivoting, making sure that our focus is taking care of the most vulnerable. And that's exactly what this continuation and enhancement of the existing subsidy does. For months, since late December, we've been doing intensive outreach and earning the trust of the unhoused at Echo Park Lake. And as of yesterday, we've housed 120 individuals 
It represents a complete paradigm shift in the way we conduct daily life and the way we access and power our homes and businesses and public spaces. So it's the way of the future, and we don't really have an alternative. It's what we must do. This is one of those quantum leaps that <laughs> history will look back at and realize that this is one of those defining moments wherein we actually are putting together a process to return indigenous land to the local tribes. There's still significant food insecurity, so that's why we're here in our monthly food distribution with Salef and Sustainable Economic Enterprises of Los Angeles who do our farmers markets, and we're doing COVID testing too. So it's kind of an all-in day of events once a month here. We are putting an unprecedented $30 million down on our renewable energy future. And the previous iteration of investment in photovoltaic and renewable energies was $4 million from the city council. This is 30. That's real skin in the game because we're serious about getting to 100% renewable in 13 years. You're going to get to know Los Angeles by being out in the real world where real things happen. So this keeps us grounded. It keeps us focused and it really elevates the spirit of collaboration to uplift and improve all of our neighborhoods. Talk about providing some color and life and vibrancy on a wall that has existed for decades and decades is just a cold cement wall and we're bringing it to life with these beautiful colors and this amazing design that was a collaboration with the neighborhood and the residents who live here. Hi, this is Los Angeles City Council member Mitch O'Farrell representing the 13th District, which is home to Corita Kent's former art studio where she created her most iconic works. It has been a privilege helping to designate Corita's studio as a historic cultural monument. This memorial day of service in memory of Tom LaBonge is meaningful to everyone and for all of us who loved him and knew him, it's a way for him to live on through us. I don't think we can give 2021 a standing ovation yet. Right. But at least it got a round of applause. So to have a standing ovation in 2022, what do you hope the new year brings? Over 90% fully vaccinated in LA County, for starters, over 90%, because then we're really talking about putting the pandemic behind us. And uh, so making sure that happens. I have so many great new communities in the 13th district after redistricting. Yeah. So I want my new constituents in North Glassell Park, west of the Silver Lake Reservoir Complex, west of La Brea, the Spalding Square and the Sunset Square neighborhoods, Windsor Square, Larchmont Village, along with all of the incredible neighborhoods that have been in the 13th district for the last couple of decades that I'm so honored to serve. I wanna wish everyone a happy holidays. Uh, my office is at your service. We love what we do. We're mission driven and uh, we're a huge believers in constituent services, free of judgment, just all in the spirit of helping one another and supporting one another. And that's what I cut my teeth on back in the day as a community activist. And I still bring that mindset uh, to governing in the city of LA. All right, all good wishes for 2022. You too, Maria, thank you.